I was just saying it, but it, and there we go. So just a quick <laughs> note for everyone that the um, the session will be recorded just to, it's not going to be sent out as major e-blast or anything. It's just so if you're partway through the night and something comes up and you want to come back to it later, uh, it'll be on the members area of the OLA website. Uh, a couple other things I just wanted to quickly note was everyone's muted when you come into the room. So you can unmute yourself. We do encourage people to uh, chat amongst yourselves at various points throughout the night. Obviously, it's a social event, so we want to encourage that. And I know Alana will talk to you about that as well, because you're welcome to ask questions throughout the, the, the session. Um, and then there's also an option where you can, um, in the top right-hand corner of, since Alana will be uh, uh, obviously running us through this or walking us through it, you can go to Atlanta's screen and she'll see uh, three uh, dots and a blue square and you're, you can pin, there's a, an option to pin her window and then that will, she'll be the, the main, um, or it'll, it'll make her window bigger so you can see how she's running the paint night. And then obviously everyone else will be able to be seen on the top of your screen. So I think that's enough about uh, some of the housekeeping items. And now I'll turn it over to Jeff. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Justin. Thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, again to uh, the OLA Paint Night. This is exciting. Um, mm -hmm. My name is Jeff Roddick. Again, Justin mentioned that. I'm from Maglin Site Furniture, and we're very happy to be sponsoring this event tonight. It should be lots of fun. And thank you to everybody in the OALA Social Committee and everybody that put this all together. They did an awesome job. So this looks like it should be a great night. And our host tonight and instructor is Alana Evers. Now, if you don't know, Alana has been a full member of the OALA since 2011, and she's been an avid painter and artist since her childhood. She is a University of Guelph BLA 2007 and University of Toronto MUDS 2014 alumna. In her current role as senior, senior project manager at the City of Toronto's Transit Expansion Office, she spends her days working with technical drawings and enjoys creating and sharing art in her spare time. She upholds the belief that there is an artist in each of us, which I think we'll put to the test tonight, but hopefully <laughs> she keeps that belief. And she believes that the process of creating is as much about the journey as the destination. Now, I've known Alana for quite a few years now, and she oh. always has a smile on her face and a super positive attitude. So I'm sure this will be a lot of fun tonight. So now I'm gonna turn this over to our painting guru and instructor for the evening, who is going to bring out the Van Gogh in each of us, mm -hmm. Alana Evers, take it over. Thank it's all yours. you, Jeff. Well said, I mean, that's quite, <laughs> I wrote part of the introduction, so I can't just say, oh, you flatter me. But I mean, like, I'm, that's flattering for you to say um, the things I didn't write there. Thank you for that. So, um, so welcome everybody. I'm really happy that you're here. This is just meant to be a fun night for all of us. And I do believe that all of us are, are artists in our own right. And one of the things that you'll find from today is that what we create is going to look different, no matter who we are, even if we're going to go off of a, um, an example here that we'll work through. And I'll make sure you can see that okay. Um, really, every painting is going to look different. So I don't want you to be stressed if it doesn't look exactly like this one. That's the beauty of it. We want everyone to create their own piece. And I, I'm sure that I'll see paintings throughout the day here, throughout the evening that I like far more than mine. That's almost a guarantee. So a couple of things. I'll go through some background info for all of us. Um, but first, this is kind of how I'm picturing that this should go. We have our introductions done. We're quite a big group, so rather than go through um, one by one each of these people, I'd say just feel free to reach out. You're, you're welcome to at any point interject and ask questions. If you have a funny comment or you just want to say hi, feel free to shout out to people. This is meant to be very much a connecting point and, and not, um, not intimidating. So please feel free to, to use your voice. So we have our intros done. I'm going to do a brief land acknowledgement to recognize the First Nations that have come before us and that are stewards of this land that we, we owe a lot to. Um, and in the spirit of reconciliation, I'm going to use the land acknowledgement for the City of Toronto because I live in Toronto. So this would be different depending on where you live, but I'll use the one for Toronto. And then we'll get right into painting. And I'll tell you about materials and I'll tell you about kind of as we go, some guidelines to follow, some things you might have fun with. 
And ultimately, I hope you can be comfortable knowing that you're not going to make a mistake. It's all art. So please feel free, feel comfortable. Don't worry about anybody judging your work. This is going to be from people that have never painted before to people that are already, you know, practicing artists. So without further ado, I'd like to just do the land acknowledgement for Toronto. We acknowledge the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabek, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. So I'll leave it there. Um, I know as an association, we have a, a commitment to reconciliation and to doing better than has been done in the past. And in, in that spirit of connection, um, that spirit of stewarding the earth, um, I, I'd like to kind of use that, that vibe, I guess, if you will, to take us into to starting to paint. So we thought we would do something a little bit autumnal, us being landscape architects, we went for a landscape theme. And it's, you know, as you know, we've just begun autumn. So this is kind of a, a fun time to get into the, the oranges, the reds, the deep yellows, the dark greens, the kind of autumn colors. So in terms of process, um, I'm hoping everybody has either a piece of paper available or a canvas or a board, whatever you want to paint on. What I'm working with here, I believe it's a 16 by 12. Let me see. Yeah, it's a 16 by 12. And it doesn't have to be that size at all. You can kind of adapt this to whatever size you're working on. Um, if you've got paper, oh, we've got some questions here. I'm just gonna make sure from Rochelle, what brand of watercolors and paint brushes do you recommend when purchased? Okay, so today, because this is meant to be a super accessible, just a fun intro kind of painting, I'm working with, um, I'm recommending people just use what they can get at the dollar store. I'm going to use, um, golden paint, which is not dollar store paint, but it's what I have. Um, but really, if you're not doing art all the time, you don't need to buy the fancy stuff. So this is what I like to use um, for like professional art that I might sell, but you don't need to have that for everyday fun. Um, when I was at the dollar store buying these, actually buying these wooden panels, um, I saw a couple great little watercolor packs as well as acrylic packs. And they're like $2, $4. I mean, they're great to get started with. And then if you want to branch out, you can get more student level or professional level paints if you go to an art store like Curry's or even Michael's or something like that. But to begin with, we're going to do acrylic um, because that's going to show up a lot better on a board or on a canvas. So acrylic's what we're working with today. Um, in terms of our process, I'm going to get into painting as quickly as I can here, because that's what you're all here for. Um, I just want to cut, oopsie, I want to go over the basics for process. So you've got your materials. I'm going to be using these kind of paint brushes. Um, as you can probably tell they're from the dollar store, I just want to be able to use something that isn't going to cost a lot of money just to be able to, to play with. Um, I have fancy stuff too, but that's like accumulated over years and it's if I'm doing really um, more fussy detailed painting. One of the things that these kind of brushes are going to allow us is that relative to the board, they're actually a pretty big size. And when we're doing an intro like this, to have a bit of an abstracted look, which can be kind of a nice aesthetic, um, it, hel it helps us to have this. Does someone have a question? I heard someone pipe in. No? Feel, feel free to interject. Okay. So, well, I'm going to be using these. Um, I might for fun, if you want to see what other stuff looks like, you can also use like, uh, I have this, it's meant for like, it's a taping knife. This is used for drywall, but I mean, I found it at Home Depot and I might use that too. So you can kind of use whatever you want. You can use your fingers, you can use the back of a brush. It's all part of the creative process. So there's no wrong here. We're going to work with the rule of thirds. And so this is the first mark that I guess I'll make on the painting here. This is a really loose rule. Um, you can always break it. But one of the rules that um, we, we kind of talk about as a compositional rule or guideline in art is the rule of thirds, meaning that if you divide your canvas into thirds on both axes, 
you end up with intersecting points. You can use a ruler to do this. You can totally eyeball it because it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball this here. And I'm gonna say that's about a third, somewhere here, that's about a third. And I'll do the same for the, yeah, kind of like that for the horizontal axis. And again, doesn't have to be perfect at all, but what this starts is that there's kind of a, I guess it's a proportional rule where it tends to be pleasing to the eye to look at things in thirds. So if you look at professional photographs or sometimes professional art, you might end up seeing that the focus is at these corners here in sort of the third areas. So if you're photographing a dog, maybe the dog's head is over this way and that's kind of what takes up the space and, and this becomes the background. In this case, I'm using this second line here on the right to create a line where we're gonna put I think of it as a larch, a tamarack tree, um, where we're gonna put a taller tree that's just gonna give us a little bit more interest in this area. So bearing in mind, all of this is gonna be painted over. Like it doesn't matter what I do right now with this pencil, it you're not gonna see it because the acrylic paint covers fully. That's where we'll start. So again, feel free to disregard anything I'm saying. You're welcome to take your own approach and do whatever the heck you want. Um, but for us today, that's where I'm gonna start as a guideline with this piece here being kind of a piece of interest and using a line of a river to somewhat intersect to create an interesting diagonal line. So that's where we're going with composition. But as you can imagine, there are as many variations for good art as, as you can dream up. So that's where we're gonna start in terms of the rule of thirds. And then we'll start with the background on top of this and then do the foreground. And acrylic paint, is buildable. So the, I don't know if the word is, but basically the, uh, the medium you use to loosen acrylic is water. So unlike with oil paint where you need to buy linseed oil to loosen it, if you ever want, I guess we're gonna start now. If you want to have, um, here, I'm gonna start with a kind of a blue for a sky in the background. Um, and I'll show you what happens. So we'll start with the blue in the corner. I'm using, this is kind of a nifty thing. I like these um, disposable sheets. It's kind of waxed on one side and then I can use it as my palette. And then I just rip that piece off and throw in the garbage. So yes, not totally sustainable, but um, it's, it's a good option for cleaning up after acrylic. So you can tell right now it's a very thick paint, just the way it kind of naturally comes out of the tube. But if you apply water, it very quickly becomes loose and it gets drippy. So if you want something that looks more watercolory, you can certainly add water and make it loose like that. Um, as we're going forward, keep in mind, the less you can worry about messing up, the better, because you can paint acrylic over acrylic over acrylic. It's basically its own whiteout. So if you don't like something about this painting, you can change it later. And also if we don't finish in the next, you know, hour and 45 minutes or whatever it is, you're, you can always come back to it. And the painting is gonna dry as we go. So oil paint that we're not using takes ages to dry. It has beautiful color saturation. That's why a lot of people in professional work use that. Acrylic is also just as professional and I find it more forgiving. So it's a really great medium to use for beginners all the way to people that are amazing, amazing at art. So one of the things I'm gonna suggest we do um, is I'm gonna encourage us to move quickly through it, to not overthink it, have fun with it. And if, you, if you're having fun in one section and I'm moving on, again, don't worry, spend your time however you like. And I'm happy to answer questions if you kind of, we have this great, resource as well in terms of all the people that are on this call with us. So you're welcome to, you know, if anybody wants to share what they accomplished halfway and say, what do you guys think? What kind of color do I need? By all means. So pick your colors, pick, you know, whatever you like to do. And again, just interrupt me. Um, I may have a hard time scanning the comments here. I'll try if someone types in the chat, I'll try to respond to it. But if I miss it, please go ahead and interrupt me. <laughs> okay, so let's start with actual painting, let's start with the background here, the sky. 
Um, for this, I am going to choose a number of colors and I think that you get a better outcome in terms of colors and depth if you mix them either on the painting itself or on your palette. So rather than using a flat color that comes out of a tube, if you pick two colors that are either similar or they could be different as well, I'll show you in a second, I think you get a bit more dimension. So I'm going to use a kind of a light blue that has, um, it looks like a stormy sky when you use this kind of like slate blue color here. And I'm going to put some gray in it and I'm going to put a color that's called, for me, it's called Titan Buff but you can make this color with like a white with a little bit of yellow or a tiny bit of brown. I find with white, um, the smallest bit of pigment introduced into a white makes a really big difference. So I'm gonna start with a color kind of like this. If you want a brighter sky, you can go ahead and use kind of a royal blue. Oh, see there's the water. <laughs> the water's making it nice and drippy. I, for this, class, I guess we'll call it for this event. I'm going to try to keep my paint nice and thick. I like it when it's got a texture to, to it. And when we kind of put it on the board here, I'm, I can't really zoom my camera in, but I can bring this piece over. One second. I'm working in my office, Kum studio, Kum kitchen, because it's a pandemic, right? So not much space. So you can use a technique like this too, where the paint actually sticks off the board and that's called an impasto technique. So if you like texture, you can just whack the paint on as much as you want. Um, and I think it provides a really nice dimension. And the only reason where you may not want to use that is if you were someone who wanted to scan this and reproduce it, you can still scan and reproduce impasto technique paintings, but it becomes harder, be, more expensive, because you can't just scan it on a regular scanner. So if you have to go to someone who does art prints, it gets pretty expensive. So back to our colors. I like this Titan buff color, and sometimes my paints stick, so I have to use pliers to open them. So I'll show you the colors as I go here. Don't worry if you're feeling a little unsure about where to go next. And also I, I keep talking, I could talk all day. So <laughs> please feel free to interrupt me. There's no, uh, you won't be speaking out of turn, I promise. So I've got this Titan buff and I've got this blue and I kind of want to put a gray in there to kind of give it this like ominous feeling. I don't know about you guys, but I love the fall and to me, a dramatic sky is sometimes more interesting than just like a plain aqua blue sky. I hear someone there. Do you have a question or a comment? Hmm. No, just someone saying hi. <laughs> we're in the world of, you know, muting and unmuting, but we're still figuring it out. Okay, I need a little bit more blue. One's called light ultramarine. So that if you have a royal blue and you want to make a color like that, I would say you'd need at least three quarters white and then a good maybe a quarter that might be like a, a royal blue or a brighter blue. And I want a little bit more. So, so what I'm gonna do with these three colors, I want these to look like a natural sky. And when you've got these kind of dramatic clouds in the sky, I find the colors blur into each other. So you don't want to combine all three of them so you have one solid color, unless you want to do like a wash where you have one solid color in the background. I want to do something that's a little bit more choppy, a little bit bigger brush strokes. So I'm going to pick up one of these bigger Dollar Shore paint brushes and I'm just going to mix. Let's see what you can see. I'm just going to bring these together on the inside and it's okay. Like you can stop right there if you want. You don't have to mix it till it's totally blended. You can have a nice um, sort of PC looking color or like I like to have it where I've got a few colors that are blending into one. So if I want more 
of the neutral buff color here, I can scoop on this side. If I want more gray, I can scoop on this side. If I want more blue, I can scoop here. And I still have this kind of like middling color here. So we're gonna be really liberal. You don't have to be too scientific about it, I promise. It's just gonna work out. And we're gonna apply this to the top third, just like here, there's a top third, that's the sky essentially. And I'm gonna suggest you go a little lower as well, because this is gonna be the line where our tree line and the skyline kind of intersect. And because you're not gonna have a solid line, you're gonna have sort of peaks of trees and treetops. If you go further down, it gives you a place to kind of have that sky in the background. The other thing I like to do, I'm gonna fill up this whole top piece here with the sky color, with the various colors we have going on. And I'm gonna bring this color down here as well, just kind of pockets, because what it does, you may find that as we get down to the bottom later where we're doing the grasses and the stream and the sort of like brush that runs along the stream, you might find it's nice to leave a portion of it untouched with those warm paint colors. And it kind of helps to bring the whole piece together. So these pieces down here that are just random at this point, they might end up being a shadow, they might end up being a piece that peeks through, it just kind of gives a bit more interest. So there is a value, I would say, to being a little messy when you're painting, just to have fun with it. Um, and you get that kind of fun abstract quality as well, which I like, that's what we're going for today. If you want to do more detail, feel free. I'm not going to get that detailed because that will take more than two hours. So we're going to do something along the lines of this. So I'm going to just for a minute, pull this down. I'll put it back. But because I'm working on the top piece here, I just want to be able to show you that for now. So I'm going to say clouds generally are darker on the bottom. If the sky, if the sun is up, presuming it's kind of, you know, middle of the day or sort of dawn or dusk or something before dawn or dusk. Clouds are typically darker on the bottom. So I'm going to use the blue and this gray to kind of work in diagonal lines just to keep it sort of like interesting lines to give us a little bit of movement like clouds often see you see in the landscape there's some kind of movement to them. Um, and I'm going to build up from the bottom. So I'll use the darker color here. And this is a little bit of an, an impasto technique, not totally. I also like when you take it off, um, off the canvas, where you don't kind of imagine that your subject is stopped at the edge of the canvas where you keep going. It's kind of interesting that way. And then on top of this, I'm gonna add the lighter color. Do you have a question? I see somebody's hand up there. Or are you just waving? There's someone who's wearing a pink shirt. You were just waving. Oh, just waving, hi. You probably have a friend here. Hi, cool. Do you do you know somebody here? Yeah, Ashley. Oh. oh, awesome. That's so great, guys. Well, you're welcome to say hi. We're just gonna paint for a bit. So if you guys want to say hi, go ahead. Alana, I'm yeah. using not a board, but like a it's got an edge to it. So like a, a canvas with an edge. So would I paint the edges as well? You absolutely can. Um, who, where, who is asking? Let me find Cynthia. you. Cynthia. Hi, Cynthia. Hi. Yeah, you totally can. Okay. Um, for expediency, I'm going to say, like, I'll do that right now just for myself, because um, we can do that as we go. Well, I typically do that. Okay. One thing people often do too is they might paint the edges in black afterwards. Oh, but okay. totally a personal preference. But it's a great question, Cynthia. I think when you paint up here, like when you give your edges, oh, I'm already getting really dirty. When you give your edges a solid paint job, I think it looks cleaner. It looks more professional. So yeah, I, I recommend that. If you have time now, you can do it. If you feel like you don't have time, that's fine too. Um, thank you for the question. So I'm still kind of working on building the bottom of these. As Cynthia says, I'm gonna do this. May as well get the top while I'm up here. May as well. And again, anywhere I can overlap, I'm overlapping. So rather than stopping straight at this line here, I'm going a little further and then we'll overlap again when we're doing the, um, the treescape. And so you can see as I'm mixing here, I've run out of blue for the most part. 
but uh, as I keep mixing, I'm developing a nicer, like um, a nice light shade of blue that's a little bit more um, of a contrast. It's still blue, still kind of grayish, but it's gonna give us a little bit of definition on the clouds. And in terms of brush strokes, I try to be really loose about it. Um, you might know, who was it? Was it Bruce Mao? There's somebody in landscape architecture or design or something and his phrase is be loose, be loose. So we learned when we were rendering in school just to be loose. Um, and it's the same with painting. Um, the, the less, the more you can let go kind of the better. Uh, and you can do, if you wanna do um, round clouds, fluffy clouds, you can kind of make circles like this on your cake. Oh, that's why I wear an apron. And that's why I keep my paper towel handy so I don't totally demolish my desk. I hope you guys, um, those that have precious floors, I hope you've dropped a little bit of a drop cloth on already. I've got one below me because I'm a renter and my landlord would not appreciate it if I dropped paint all over the floor. <laughs> so always, I mean, always a good thing to do, right? To protect your floors, protect your furniture. I, I followed suit with that, Alana. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Actually, I forgot to have a sip of my, my foamy apple juice. Oh, very nice. It's been a few minutes. Okay. It's a good cue, hydrate everybody. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna just kind of keep up here I was showing you guys, if you want sort of um, friendly bubbly clouds and you have a paintbrush like this, you can just stick it on and twirl it. And you get circles, they're kind of cartoonish. They look like this. Or if you want something more natural, I tend to like a bit more of a natural look myself. I'm just gonna do kind of um, almost like X's. Like, how do I describe it? Yeah, it's kind of like, one direction and then a 45 degree in the other direction. But it's all very much like your preference. And I just noticed I haven't gone down here enough yet. One thing you'll notice too sometimes, if you take a look at the sky during the day, um, if it's a clear blue day, I found this, um, the sky is a lot more blue in the middle of the sky. As you kind of come down toward the tree line, it gets a little bit, I'd say, um, paler, a little bit of a softer blue. Um, so that can be a nice effect too. So I kind of want a little more softness in my sky. So I'm just gonna fill in some pieces here where I see I haven't covered the floor totally, just to get nice coverage there. And I think I want to have, what do I want? I want this sky down here to be a little lighter and I want to add some white, like not totally white, but off-white clouds that are fluffy and friendly. So when you're buying paints, if you're having fun and getting into it, I highly recommend getting more white than other colors because the pigment goes a long way. And I find that whenever I paint, I need a lot of white to keep me going as I mix my color. Um, you don't need a lot of colored paint to go a long way, but white, it's like the ratio is kind of different. You just tend to need a lot more, um, a lot more of, of the, of the white, um, white acrylic. So I've got kind of a lighter color going on here, mixing a whole bunch of white into my gray. And I think I'm just gonna see where it's lightest already and kind of blend as I go here. And I might softly drag to kind of make it look like a, a little bit more realistic, a little bit more cloud-like. And this is all an experiment for me too as I'm doing this. A little bit like I made the other painting, but this is all very much kind of learning as you go. So I'm gonna do what Cynthia suggested because that's a great suggestion. And while I'm here, just paint the edges to make it look a little more profesh. And then I'm gonna take a step back and see what I'm, what I'm missing. What am I not liking? So to me, I'm not liking how this is a little bit rigid. I think I need to break this piece up a little bit. 
maybe just blend it. Maybe I need to bring in some water to kind of soften it. So I'm just picking up water on my brush and dabbing a little bit to kind of blend. So it's more of a subtle, um, less of a harsh stroke. And then I think I'd like two more things. I wanna put a bit more of a dark line here under this cloud. I wanna have it stand out as kind of the, the closest cloud that I'm looking at. So I'm gonna need some more gray. And I think I might even use a darker blue to give a little bit more dimension. Ooh. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna use a super dark color. I'm gonna get really bold with it and use the tiniest bit of this. This is like a, a very deep purple. It's almost black. And I'm gonna use the smallest bit to change this color to make it a little bit darker because I don't feel like I have enough dimension yet. How's everybody doing? How's the check-in? If I check in, how are you feeling? Are you guys painting comfortable? Is he? Okay, great. I see some happy people. That's good. I can't wait to see what you guys create. It's going to be the fun part or the funnest part, I should say. It's all fun to me. Okay, so I'll, I'll show you an example if you guys are interested in terms of blending. Yeah. I've got the tiniest bit of purple here and I'm just picking up like a dot at the edge and look how much that changes the gray in the center. If I have that one dot on the corner of my brush, it doesn't take much to make that color change. So it's gonna be really subtle. That's the same amount, just a dot and I'm still working with this. So I'm gonna mix the gray. And see where that gets us. Okay. It's a little bit. There we go. Little bit of purple. Kind of gives us a nice bit of dimension here. And I'm gonna I'm going for wispy clouds as it turns out. I didn't really know what I wanted to do until I started to do it. I'm gonna have some wispy clouds here. And another rule that some of you might remember from planting plans is that the rule of odd numbers. If you're putting plants together, just like if you're putting um, a composition together, plants and objects often look aesthetically pleasing in odd groups of numbers. So three conifers together looks better than two conifers together, typically. Oh, I see some a message from Therese. So let me just read that. She says she's wondering if there can be live closed captioning. Oh, good question. Okay, so I don't know, I, I can't tell from that Therese if you're having a hard time hearing now. Um, I wonder if we, Justin or Jeff or Sean, do you know if we have closed captioning capability? Just looking for it now. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's thanks, Therese. That's a really good idea, and we hadn't thought of that. So let's just take a minute. We'll see what we can do. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to message. She might not be able to hear me, or others who have hearing loss may not be able to hear me either. So I'm just going to message back in the chat. Um, I'm just going to say that we're looking into it right now to see if we can make that happen. So I'm just letting Therese know we're looking into that right now to see if we can make it happen. 
if not right this instant, we, we do need to do that in the future. That's something that I think we overlooked on this one. So very good point. Um, I'm not seeing the capability to do the closed captioning. I apologize. I'm, I, yeah, I'm going to look. I don't know if that's the capability that we have, but that's a very good point. Um, yeah, I think it's sometimes um, I, I think sometimes you can only do it before you start the Zoom that's meeting. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh. oh, darn. Well, what happens if we, I mean, I'm just spitballing here, but in terms of accessibility, what happens if we try to start again? Like worst case scenario, we'd have two recordings, right? Can we, can we try to just log into the same link again? Um, it says, somebody said it's done in the advanced settings for the host person, with the host person. And right. I know Zoom does have that capability. Um, yeah. It's just not letting me because I'm recording right now. Yeah. So what so happens? Have to stop the recording, I think. Okay. On the host sign in. Okay. So again, just kind of working through this a lot here, but what happens if we just stop recording for a second? Yeah. You know.